Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. On today's show, we're talking about the mental game of handling sticker shock. It doesn't matter how often I remind myself that a high quote from a subcontractor is nothing more than a high quote. I still experience an emotional reaction. It takes time to work through all of the second guessing that happens when you experience sticker shock. Am I out of touch? Is my budget at risk? Did I make a budgeting mistake? All of those self-doubts are normal. Dealing with the uncertainty can be stressful and anxiety-provoking. Do I work through the budget problem or share the risk with the project stakeholders? Through the process of value engineering, you'll discover the true cost of the most efficient solution. These quotes happen with alarming regularity. I'm not talking about the quote that's 5 to 10% higher than expected. I'm talking about quotes that are 70 to 100% higher than expected. When you ask for clarification, the subcontractor will blame the cost of materials. And then when you break down the cost of materials and ask for an explanation, the response is usually a dismissal. I've had subcontractors thank me for the opportunity to bid, but they can't do the job for the expected price. This requires a regrouping and a reclarification of the specifications to improve the chances that the next bid comes in closer to expectation. Maybe the subcontractor thinks you're a rookie and are ripe to be taken advantage of. Maybe the subcontractor thinks that quoting high is the first step in a negotiation, expecting to give up a few percentage points and still be left with a high profit margin. Maybe the subcontractor is thinking they can blame inflation and simply charge more. Whatever the reason, these subcontractors are building a reputation with me and ultimately closing the door to doing future business. Yes, the world of construction can be a bit rough and tumble, but there's a difference between unsophisticated and unethical. I recently met a subcontractor who built his entire house out of materials stolen from various job sites. Construction requires discipline. It requires commitment to tenacity and an unwavering willingness to dig deep and solve problems when they present themselves. You need to make sure you're working with people who are willing to go the extra mile to save you money. It happened again today. I received a quote, 68% above the budgetary estimate. The emotional roller coaster that results from these quotes requires a lot of discipline to overcome. Even as it's happening, even when you know that that's just an emotional reaction, it still requires discipline. In market conditions like this, it feels like we're playing defense instead of playing offense. Playing defense is not nearly as fun as putting points on the scoreboard. Construction projects are the most fun when you've got a rich choice of products at prices that you like and a rich choice of high quality subcontractors to perform the work. And today we've got the opposite. We've got product shortages, we've got arrogant suppliers, arrogant subcontractors, and insane quotes. You don't get to choose the products you want either because of cost or availability. My definition of stress is a simple one. Stress exists when there's a gap between expectation and reality. It's in that gap that stress lives. If there's no gap, there can be no stress. But the forcing function of adversity is the breeding ground of creative solutions. We often appreciate those creative solutions more in hindsight, even if we don't welcome the adversity in the moment. This is the time when fostering relationships with suppliers is key. This is when demonstrating professionalism and earning the respect of both your suppliers and subcontractors is essential to finding solutions. There's also tribal knowledge to be gained from other developers and constructors who have their own private channels to getting things done. In a supply-constrained environment, there's shadow inventory all throughout the supply chain. And we've encountered builders who are sitting on large quantities of inventory that are now priced above current market pricing. They're often willing to sell that inventory at a modest loss with the recognition that that same inventory is likely going to fall in value in the coming months as the market softens further. Then there's the old school suppliers in the construction industry who don't put all of their inventory online. If you're confining your search to digital means, you're probably missing the inventory that's hidden in plain sight in the offline world. If you've ever done a scavenger hunt, it was probably a lot of fun. It was a game. I once did a scavenger hunt in Boston. We managed to get many items checked off our list in the first few minutes. Rather than looking for a major center, we went into the town center of a suburb and found the police department, the fire department, and city hall all located on the same block. But it required hyper-local knowledge to navigate the complexity of the scavenger hunt and to come out on top, winning against the six other teams in the hunt. It's so much more fun playing offense than defense. This is the mental game. As you think about that, have an awesome rest of your day.
go make some great things happen. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.